How much would an extra $2,000 a week help you? Maybe you'll quit your job, buy a new house, whatever it is. I only trade for one to two hours a day max and strictly just the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ indexes. And this is gonna be a full guide on how I do it. Make sure you watch the entire video because each step is very, very crucial. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna let y'all in on a little secret on how to get a free full course on the whole strategy I'm talking about with hours of more in-depth content that most traders would charge you thousands of dollars for completely free. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. So before we get started, let's go over some things you, you need to trade, right? So you're gonna need to have a brokerage account. And I recommend if you have at least $25,000, use Thinkorswim, which is what I use. I've been using it for eight years. They're a regular broker. They're, they're pretty much awesome. The customer support is awesome. Um, the thing is you have to have a lot of money to trade with them or to trade futures with them. You have to have at least $25,000. So if you have less than $25,000 and you're still trying to use the same strategy and make the same kind of money, use Ninja Trader. They are also awesome, but instead of needing 25,000, you need 500. So that's what I would recommend as brokers. So brokers are, are where you're gonna go, go ahead and buy and sell. It's where you're gonna go ahead and look at the charts and trade and all the good stuff, right? You need them to be able to trade. Obviously you need a computer and internet. If you don't have a computer and internet, well, figure out how to get that first and come back to this video. And then when it comes to actually having the funds required to trade, you don't need too much, right? If you want to use your own money, I require or I recommend starting out with one to $10,000 to trade futures. That's basically it, especially, especially if you're using NinjaTrader, $1,000 will let you trade two um, ES contracts, which I'm going to get to in a little bit here. But if you don't want to use your own money, there's something called prop firms and you can pay just as little as $49 a month and you can go ahead and take their challenge and you get funded up to fifty thousand a hundred thousand dollars and use their money to trade and then build up your own account from that instead of starting out with your own money which is also a great solution so this is the framework that we're going to be implementing in today's video teaching you everything you need to know how to get started and make two thousand dollars a week going forward so we're going to show you the, the smart money mindset right we want to show you how to think like the smart money traders who actually make money, they control the market, right? Us retail traders don't do anything to the market. We have to think like an investor, think like a bank, think like a hedge fund. Then we're gonna go ahead and show you technical analysis, which is kind of how you read charts, where we base, where we wanna take trades, when you wanna take trades, what we wanna trade, it's all about analysis and reading charts. And it's a very simple strategy I use. Then risk management is kind of a personalized, simple risk management plan I'm gonna be implementing to you so you can get a better idea of how to manage your own money, not just in trading, but in life in general. Then market psychology, we're gonna go over the market makers structure, their secrets, what they do, how they try to stop you and avoid you from making money. And we'll go over how to exactly to get over that and actually trade with them, not against them. So smart money mindset, right? We want to get you to not think like a retail trader. Retail traders are basically anybody that's not a bank, not a hedge fund, not an institution, it, people that are trading just for themselves, right? I am a retail trader. 95% of us retail traders fail. And they do that for a reason because they all trade the same way. They all think the same way. So obviously they're going to fail. I'm going to try to get y'all to think and trade like the 5% that don't fail. So understanding that smart money psychology is a very key aspect of that, right? So by this, I mean, what is trading, right? It's an auction market, just like the car auction, just like a real estate auction. Trading is an auction market, right? Meaning that the market will go up until the last buyer buys and go down until the last seller sells. So it's a buyer versus seller. Every time you buy a stock, someone is selling to you. Every time you sell a stock, somebody is buying from you, right? It's one versus one every single time. So I like to use the analogy as dumb people versus smart people. Smart people taking money away from dumb people is what the stock market basically is. So before we continue here, I want you to figure out what type of trader you are, right? Are you an investor, someone who wants to be in a position for years? Hopefully not if you're watching this video because you want you to make 2K a week, you can't do that but being an investor. Are you a swing trader who wants to, you know, take a couple of trades, one trade a week, one trade or two trades a month? A day trader, which you're taking around a trade a day, I'd say, or a scalp trader, meaning that you're in a position for five, 30 minutes max, you're taking a couple of trades a day. And I am a scalp trader and a day trader. I trade every single day because I like trading. I enjoy sitting in front of the charts, reading the charts, looking at numbers, looking at graphs and making money. That's just my kind of thing. But if you're not that into looking at charts all day, you can be a swing trader where you just look at a chart every once in a while, get in one to two trades a week and then make your money like that. And the important thing to realize here is no matter what kind of trader you are, the strategy I'm gonna be teaching you is the exact same thing. It's gonna work for everything. So. The key takeaway after that is that you don't have to sit in front of your computer for five hours a day like I do to make money, right? 
Price action, which is what I'm going to be teaching you, stays the same for all types of trades. Risk management stays the same. The strategy is going to differ slightly. That only means that your profits, let's say if you're swing trading one or two trades a week, your profits are going to be higher, right? If you're day trading one trade a day, your profits are going to be lower. So that's what changes a little bit, right? The more trades you take, the more money you have to make, the less trades you take, the less money you have to make per trade. So the market basics, let's go over some basic things about the market. Right? So the market is actually, or trading is a game of risk, right? It's educated risk and it's a game of losing. It's a game of probability because you never know what's going to happen in the stock market. You can have probable chances that your edge is going to happen, but you never really know what's going to happen. So you got to make that educated guess, risking the right amount to make sure that in the long run, you're consistently profitable. So why do stocks move? This is important. They move because of simple supply and demand. What you learn in econ class in high school, right? So more supply, the more the stock will go down the more demand the more the stock will go up etc so the market participants again this is also important us retail traders make up three percent of the market three percent that's it we don't move the market for jack right the hedge funds institutions the banks they make up 97 percent of the market volume it means they're the ones moving the market to whatever direction they want and that's who we have to learn to follow the market makers so our main focus here is we're not going to trade shares we don't trade apple shares or tesla shares we trade future contracts why because they're leveraged, they're highly leveraged, and that's what we're looking for leverage, right? We wanna make that $500 we're starting off with work for us. So how are we gonna make 2K a week with $500? If you're trading shares, you can't do that. But if you're trading futures, that $500 a week or $500 in your account can become $2,000 a day because they're leveraged. So what a future contract is, this is what it is right here, right? It's a promise to buy or sell something at a set price in the future, blah, blah, blah. But what it is doesn't matter. You don't care about what it is. What you care about is that you can be bought and sold the same as stocks with the click of a button. You can buy and sell these. So simple. You just press one button to buy, one button to sell. The important thing is here is that they're leveraged. That means their money will work for you. With $500, you can make two k a week with only $500. You can't do that with shares. So we want to trade future <coughs> contracts. These are the only two contracts we're going to be trading, right? When traders start out, they make the massive mistake of trying to trade everything. They try to over trade, trade every share, trade every stock. When you're in reality, you only need two to three, maybe even one instrument to be successful. You don't need to trade everything. 90% of my profits last year are mostly just from the S&P 500, the ES, future contracts, right? So the ES and NQ, I'm sure y'all are familiar with these things. They're very, very um, big in the investment world. People put their retirements into here. They average 9, 13% a year. They're very, very safe and they're highly, highly liquid and there's a lot of volume, which is why I love trading them, right? And this is the, the New York Stock Exchange is you know, part of the ES and the NASDAQ is part of the NQ, Q, Q, Q. The important part here is let's look at this area right here. Every dollar the ES moves on the chart, you make $50 off of that dollar. This is what I mean by leverage, right? This is the micro ES contract, which is just a smaller version of the ES contract. The ES future contract is a contract of the SPY. The NQ is a contract of the QQQ, which is the NASDAQ. So every dollar ES moves or every dollar the micro moves, you make $5, right? So it's leverage times 50. Your money is 50 times leverage. Same that your micro contracts, your money is five times leverage, right? And just because you can make 50 times more, you can also lose 50 times more. So keep that in mind. This is just me showcasing how simple it is to actually buy these. You just press buy on one side, you press sell on the other side. The ES contract up here, it's so simple to buy and sell. All you gotta do is set up your broker account and you're good to go. Now let's go over the charts, right? This is how we're gonna pick exactly where to buy, when to buy, and it's simple. This is where most people get lost and confused, but it's honestly really easy. So price over time is what a chart is gonna show us, right? It has the price on the x-axis, or the y-axis, sorry, and then the time on the x-axis, which is just showing us the price over time at a graph. It's giving us a visual representation of where price is, where price was, and where price might be going in the future. So obviously you want to buy low and sell high. So that's kind of where we use a chart to gauge that. Where is the, is the stock low right now? Is the stock high right now? Should I buy? Should I sell? We have to use a chart. So short selling is something I want to implement into y'all as well. Short selling is you can make money when price goes down, right? Instead of, let's say you think the stock is going to go down. Instead of pressing buy, you press sell. And it's just as easy as buying, as easy as selling. So the definition of short selling is you're borrowing the stock from a broker at X price, selling it right away. And then when it goes down, you return it and you pocket whatever that difference is, right? That The definition, again, doesn't matter. What matters is you can buy it just as much or as easy as you can sell or buy. Sorry, you can buy the shorts just as easy as you can buy the longs. And it's as simple, but instead of making money when the stock goes up, you make money when the stock goes down. So if we're in a recession, if we're in a bad state of the economy, you can still make consistent money. It does not matter. 
And now this is important here, the types of orders we're gonna have in a stock market. When we're buying and selling in the stock market, we have a couple different types of orders. A limit order, these are the passive orders as I like to call them. These are orders, let's say Apple is at $100, right? Apple's at $100 and you only wanna buy Apple if it gets down to $90. So you put a limit order in the market to only buy Apple when Apple reaches $90. That means whenever Apple goes down to $90, your order will get filled and you will get put into the position. On the opposite hand, a market order are aggressive orders, meaning that you've ever been into a restaurant and you know looked at the menu and you see the menu for lobster, for example, or oysters, say market price, that means it's constantly changing. So whatever the current market price of lobster is, if you wanna eat lobster during that day, you'll pay that market price. Same thing with the stock market. Whatever the current market price is of whatever instrument you're trading, let's use Apple, for example. If Apple's at $100 and you wanna buy Apple, you put a market order and it'll get you filled at $100 because whatever, whatever Apple is trading at, that's what you get filled at for buying and selling, right? A stop loss order is once you're already in a position, let's say you already got, you put a market order on Apple and you're in Apple for $100. And let's say you don't wanna lose more than $10 on that trade, right? You go long. So you put a stop loss order, which is kind of like a limit order, but it's just once you're already in a trade to protect your money. So you put a stop loss order at $90. That means if Apple goes down to $90, it's gonna sell you and cut you out of position, you're gonna lose $10 and you're gonna be safe, right? That's what a stop order is. Once you're already in a position to protect your order. Now this is showing you a chart. Now stick with me here, right? What we just talked about, right? Is time on the X axis down here, price on the Y axis, right? So all the way over here is earlier in the year, price is around $1,200. All the way right here is right now, price is around $1,400. That's all this chart is showing us. All time high, all time low is the price over time. That's all it's showing us. So this is again, another very important aspect of, let's go back here, of trading, right? So every stock instrument, whatever it is you're trading, has a bid price and the ask price, right? It's the ask is the price the sellers are selling at, which is a more expensive price, and the bid is the buyers, the price the buyers are buying at. So obviously the sellers want to sell at a more expensive price, the buyers want to buy at a cheaper price. That's just the name of what the things are occurring in the market, and the spread is just the difference between them, right? This is important to know because remember the market orders and the limit orders I was talking to you all about. So market orders when it'll hit the bid when you're selling right it will sell you at a cheaper price because it wants you to get filled quicker and when you're buying at a market price when you put a market order to buy it will fill you at the ask it'll fill you at a more expensive price right because that's when you're being aggressive so you will be aggressively bought in at a more expensive price or if you're selling you're being aggressive with that market order that means you're all, all automatically get filled at a cheaper price gets you in there quicker right that's what it means when you put in a market order Bid and ask is important in that because that helps us identify who's being a right, aggressive buyers or aggressive sellers, who's in control here, right? Aggressive buyers will buy at the ask, meaning they're buying at a higher price. They're being aggressive. Aggressive sellers will sell at a cheaper price. They'll sell at the bid, right? Because they're being aggressively sold. They're selling at a cheaper price. They want to get out quicker. And there's passive buyers and sellers are all the limit orders I was talking all about, right? Very simple to understand here. So let's get into the actual technical analysis part of this whole um, system here, right? Reading charts, determining where to buy, when to buy, what to look at, what not to look at. This is a very simple way I use to read charts. And my whole strategy here is kind of identifying the smart money, right? So we're going to take a look at price action. The historical areas on a chart where price takes action, right? Hence, price action, right? Then we're going to look at volume, which is the amount of shares, contracts, futures, whatever it is being bought and sold at that specific point in time. Then order flow is kind of a little, um, you know, cherry on top of the whole strategy to get your win rate to the next level pretty much. So let's just go back a little bit here, right? This is the chart. The chart phases, oh, they only move in one of the three ways, right? The chart's all either going up, making higher highs, higher lows, it's moving sideways, or it's going down, making lower lows and lower highs. That's it, the chart will only move like that ever. Now that we know that, right? Take a look at the chart that I was just showing you, right? Price is either moving sideways, going down, moving sideways or going up. That's it. It's very important to know which phase of the market cycle we are currently in, right? So these candlesticks, right? This is kind of, this is kind of what y'all are seeing inside the chart, right? It's just a visual representation of price. So these candlesticks are just showing me if it's green, each of these um, candles you're seeing in the chart, right, is a week, right? Here you can see, you can select week, day, whatever it is you wanna look at. Then each of these candlesticks right here, that's, I call them candlesticks, these boxes with lines, are representing you the time and the price over a week, right? So now that we know that, if it's green, right, that means the price opened lower than it closed. If it's red, right, the price opened above or higher than it closed, right? Green is showing that the price went up during that weekly time frame. Red is showing that price went down during that weekly time frame, right? 
and then the the lines here are called the wick right the inside of the candle is called the body the lines are called the wick what this is this means is the top of that wick or the line is where price was the highest in that weekly time frame and the bottom of that line is where price was the lowest in that weekly time frame right so looking at this candle here this one for example right this candle means during this week price went down over a hundred dollars right this is where price was the highest. This is where price was the lowest. Price opened right here. Price closed down here at the top, bottom of the body. That's all a candlestick is showing us. It's giving us a good visual representation of price. So people like to use candlestick patterns to trade and do a bunch of things. And I personally do not trade candlestick patterns, but there's one pattern that I do like to watch out for. And that's this looking candle right here. If you see this candle, it's a good sign that price is gonna reverse and go the other way, right? So when you see a very small body and a very long wick to the opposite side, right? Right here, for example, you see a small body, long wick to the downside, price goes up, all right? Price starts going up, right? Candle, small body, long wick to the upside, price starts going down, right? Candle right here, small body, long wick to the downside, price starts going up, and then happens over and over and over again. So that's something I watch out for. The next thing is probably the most important aspect of price action, supply and demand. It's how we identify the smart money, right? Just like future contracts, what they are, right here is the definition of them. Let me move my face out of the way. What they are don't really matter. It doesn't matter what it is, right? What matters is how to identify them, how to draw them, and how to use them, which I'm gonna be showing you all right now. So what they are is just showing us the smart, smart, big money, right? So what we look for, right, when we're looking for a supply and demand zone is a sideways movement on a chart before an explosive move down. Sideways movement on a chart before an explosive move up. One or the other, right? Up is demand zone, down is supply zone. So what this is basically telling me is, right, to make an explosive move up like this or down like this, it takes millions and billions of dollars to do this. So we do this, we draw the box around where price was sideways, because this is where all the orders are building up, this is where price was being fair, and right after we get an explosion of that move up or down, that's when we know big money has stepped in. So we draw the box right before the explosion and the big move up, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at an example here. So, right, we have sideways movement and we'll draw the box around that sideways movement. Sideways movement, we'll draw the box around that sideways movement before an aggressive move down, down, or an aggressive move up, right? Right here is another zone, but it's not drawn. So how you can use these zones, right? When price is approaching one of these zones, right? You can know there's a lot of supply in the zone. Price is approaching the zone and you can enter right at the touch of the zone, right? Your take profit could be the next coming zone and your stop loss where you're gonna get out will be the break of the zone. Simple way to use them, right? Now, how, we, how do we identify if it's gonna break like it did here or bounce, right? And this is where volume will come in. This will help us identify if it's gonna break or if it's gonna bounce. So volume bars, what we're gonna see at the bottom of the chart, right? Let's go back here a little bit. These volume bars down here is what we're going to be seeing at the bottom of the chart, and they're automatically put in on Thinkorswim, whatever charting platform you have. Just add volume in there. So now that you have volume, right, this is showing us the number of transactions per candle, right? It's showing us the interest at price, as I like to call it. So for volume in zones, as we're approaching the zone, you see how the green volume starts dying out. And right when we get in the zone, we see big red volume come in and the volume is still low. So this is showing us that in this zone, right, we're seeing less volume, less green volume, more red volume is indicating to us a bounce. When you see more volume, for instance, this time we're going into the zone here, we see more and more green volume or the green volume really isn't dying out. That signifies a break, right? Less volume in a zone signifies a bounce. More volume in a zone signifies a break. That's how you use volume in combination with the zone to identify if it's going to break or if it's going to bounce. The next thing here is trends, right? We want to trade with the trend, right? So when price is going up, making higher highs, it's uptrending. When price is going down, making lower lows, it's downtrending. And whenever a trend breaks, a new trend is formed. So you see how this trend broke on the upside, now we're downtrending. The trend broke on the upside, now we're uptrending. And this is an example of why I want to trade with the trend, right? For this play, I've just shown you the example, right? We were downtrending, downtrending, downtrending. And as soon as you come back into the zone, it would have been a beautiful play if you would have waited for it. Um, you see that it also is bouncing off this trend line and now we're going down. You want to trade always with the trend to be in your favor. Never go against the trend when you're trading. So, quick example of the profit and risk for this play. If you're using the strategy I just showed you where you're going to take that the next zone as you take profit, the break of the zone is your stop loss. Well, basically what you're, what you're doing here is um, you're risking 30 points to make 150 points. So if you're trading one of those big contracts, you're risking $1,500 to make $7,500. And again, that risk for me is too much. I would probably put my stop loss right above this candle, risking like five points at max, risking $250 at max to make $7,500. That's what I would have done. So there's two types of setups I'm gonna be showing y'all here. If y'all stick to these two setups, you're gonna be doing just fine, right? The setups are the zone bounce, meaning when you get to a zone, you bounce, 
or the zone break, right? When you break a zone, we come back and retest that zone and we play the break long. Those are our two entries for the plays I'm showing y'all, right? Then the stops on these two plays are going to be on invalidation, right? Break of key level. So supply and demand gets broken, you put your stop there. Or if you use indicators, if that indicator gets broken, you put your stop there. I personally do not use indicator, right? Or if you see a break of trend, um, you get out of there as well. For example, here, if you get in short here, right, your stop can be right above the zone, right? If you get in long here and you see it finally start to break the trend, you can get out right there. Well, let's see you get in short here, right? You can put your stop at the next uh, break of the next previous high, right? It's a very personal thing. You can put your stop wherever you want to put it, but that's just what I recommend. Your take profits, same thing. Should be the next coming supply and demand zone, the next coming support and resistance level, whatever it is, it's time frame dependent, right? So if you're swinging and you're looking at the four hour chart, don't zoom down to find your take profits, right? If you're stay trading at the five minute chart, don't zoom up to find your take profit. Example, you take profit, if you go to short right here, the next coming zone, or if you use an indicator like the v VWAP or EMA line, which I don't use, if you go on long right here, you can take profits at the EMA line or VWAP. Whatever next coming support resistance line is, that's where you wanna take your profits. So let's talk about how we're going to manage risk here um, using this whole strategy, right? So we trade mostly based on risk, right? So we're going to find our win rate, our risk to reward ratio, and we're going to combine discipline to that to make sure we're consistently profitable in the long run, no matter what happens. So the win rate, right? So I want you to go ahead and back test using my strategy, meaning just zoom out a little bit, go back in time, just rewind the charts. Thinkorswim is a free back testing platform you all want to use, which lets you rewind and play back to future dates, past dates, whatever it is. So start with the one on one risk to reward ratio, mean, meaning use my strategy. And if you're aiming to make $100, only risk $100, right? And take trades, just 10 trades and see which one of those trades um, hits your take profits, which one of those trades hits your stop loss and just record that, right? So if you three, three out of 10 of your trades hit the take profit before the stop loss, you're 30% accurate, which is honestly not that bad. It's not bad because you can use this table right here to um, get your win rate or to get your risk to reward ratio. So if you're only 30% accurate, every single time you take a trade, you have to make sure you have a three to one risk to reward ratio. Meaning that if you're aiming to make $300, you can only risk $100. If you're aiming to make $3,000 or you take profit level, you can only risk $1,000. So if you're 50% accurate, you can have a two to one. If you're 60%, you can have a one to one and you'll be fine. So make sure you use this table, make sure you back test, get your win rate, use this table. And in the long run, if you have discipline to stick with it, you'll be prof profitable, right? And that's where the discipline comes in, right? So before you enter any single trade, determine where your stop loss is going to be, determine where your take profit is going to be, and make sure that collides with your risk to reward ratio. And if it doesn't, don't take the trade, right? With experience, your win rate will improve and as well as your ability to manage risk. So only trade again based on risk. If the setup does not collide with your risk to reward ratio, don't take it. Be patient. Wait for the next one that makes sense with your risk to reward ratio and then take the trade. So again, risk management is personal, right? It's dependent on your account size, your risk tolerance, and your emotional attachment to money. So let's quickly go over the market psychology, the last part of this whole thing before you're all ready to go and start making you 2K a week from trading. So we're gonna go over the market maker structure, the liquidity and market traps that per are presented in the stock market pretty much every single day. They try to trap you. So liquidity, right? Whenever you buy, somebody else is selling from you, right? As I said in the beginning of this, whenever you sell, somebody else is buying from you. So if I wanna buy 100 contracts, I can get filled instantly just like that right so the market makers the big guys they traded such high volume it's very hard to get filled right and there is a problem let's say they want to offload a billion shares of nike someone has to be buying a billion shares from them and that's very, very hard to do right because if a big guy is selling you probably don't want to be buying so there is the problem so they will create market traps. I mean, they will manipulate movements in the market to fake a direction so they can create liquidity and they can get you to come in and you become the liquidity. So sometimes this is the only way they can offload a huge position, right? If they want to close out of a position, they have to be someone on the other side closing out for them. So they have to create a false sense of market movement, get people to come in short so they can go long. That's basically how it works. These are examples of some fake outs they will do. They will do a level two spoof, um, which I'll show you in a little bit what these things are. They'll do a false breakout, right? Stop hunting, they will hunt for your stop losses. They'll have retail trader chart pattern traps and things like that. So an example right here is a fake breakout, right? They get here, fake breakout, you see that wick and people here will think to go long because it broke out. Again, that's why they wait for the retest and it automatically sells right off. You are the liquidity for the big guys. Right here, right? We get a break of trend break of trend into a demand zone, right? Making lower lows. And right here is probably, let's say you got long right here, it hit your stop, or let's say you got in short because it broke a trend line and you're creating the liquidity for the big guys to come in and take the price up, right? Again, a fake out right here, low interest at this high. We're gonna use volume to, to talk about this in a little bit here. We get a wick up here, fake breakout, just to move the market right back down. 
stop punt, right? Uh, what we were just looking at. So let's say you got in along right here at a break retest of the zone and your stop would be right down here, right? So they go ahead, hit your stop, hit most people stops, creating a liquidity sweep and then push the price right back up. This is stop hunting. So how are we gonna avoid them? We're gonna wait on confirmation, right? So we wait for the retest. Not only that, we're gonna use order flow and volume to identify trapped players or you know, doing the opposite of the retail trader. So basically right here, right from this like up right here, low interest. Remember, this is volume. There's low interest, low volume on this break. To me, indicating this is a fake move out. So if you look at volume, you see there's less volume on a break up. It's probably the market maker trying to come trap you. Same thing right here. If you see less volume on a move down like this, the market makers are trying to trap you, right? Same thing right here. If you see less volume on these moves down like this, the market makers, again, are trying to trap you. So look at volume, very important. Order flow. So order flow is kind of what I was hinting at, at the beginning, a little cherry on top. If you all want me to make a video on order flow, I will. I think I'm going to cut it off for now because order flow is a whole nother setup. You don't need it to be successful, but again, it's a very important, a very useful tool. So if you want me to make a video on order flow, leave it down in the comments and I will. So this is an important quote, right? Retail traders like myself can make 400% a year while hedge funds average only 20%. That's because they trade with such large quantities. And, you know, 20% of their billions of dollars is a lot more than 40% of my millions. But, you know, that's just how it works. This is a checklist I want you all to screenshot right down before you get into any trade or any trading day, right? Remember only the key levels. Remember only supply and demand zones. Do your pre-market research before. Write out your trading plans. Know exactly where you're going to get in, when you're going to get in, where you're going to get out. Make sure it collides with the risk management plan. So if that play you just you know wrote down doesn't make sense to the risk reward ratio, don't take it, right? Start small. Size up. Check the economic calendar. Make sure you're not running into any crazy news that could affect the market, right? Wait on confirmation. Wait on that retest. Don't be afraid to execute. If everything matches the setup, if everything looks good for you, matches your risk to reward ratio, execute. Take the trade. Some quick rules you can have to make sure you're not losing too much money here. Five trades per day max, three losses per day max, and then you're out, right? This is what I want you all to do post-market to make you even better, right? I want you to track your trades and then go back over and review them. Journal your trades so you can review them at the end. Write down what you did wrong, then repeat. Do this and you'll be fine. So I hope you all enjoyed the video and learned a lot. I'm going to leave it off with this quote. The only traders that actually fail in the market are the ones who give up. Trade safe. Let's go make some money.